I want to talk to you about unit six. Unit six is all about exponent rules. <coughs> and I want to go ahead and explain to you what that is. We'll start with that exponents are commonly connected with mononomials. So what a mononomial is, is the first explanation we're going to have to take a look at. Well, let's break the word down. Mono means one. Nomial kind of means the idea of a term. Well, that's the algebraic way, or the mathematical way of saying an algebraic expression consisting of only one term. Well, let's take a look at what that means, because a term sometimes is confused with just a single variable. So these are all considered examples of algebraic terms. So we have 5x squared, and 5x only have one variable. But when we look over here at 9x squared y to the 7th power, it has two variables, but it's all connected through multiplication or division. That's what makes it a single term. It's not separated by addition or subtraction. So when you think mononomials, it can have multiple variables. It just can't have any addition or subtraction separating those variables. Well, let's take a look. There, we're going to start with the seven basic, or sorry, the five basic operations of mathematics. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, and powers of these mononomials. So let's explore the first two, add and subtract. So when you add and subtract a mononomial, you have to make sure that everything is the exact same, the variable and the exponent. Now, the coefficient can be different, but the variable and the coefficient have to be exactly the same. It kind of reminds you back to when you were working with fractions and you couldn't add one-third and two-fifths until they had a common denominator, say, 15. So, and we're actually going to take a look at that exact style on number 8 down here. So let's start this out. Are there any in here you can't combine because the variable term is different? Take a look at the problems. You're right, number five isn't correct. A and B and AC, while they both share A, they're not exactly the same. Therefore, this is the final answer. There's no change. You cannot simplify it any further. It kind of reminds you back to adding and subtracting like terms. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first four on this page and get the answer. Well, we'll, do, the, we'll do the evens. Two through eight. So we start out going negative 23y squared and plus 6y squared. Well, the variables and the exponents are exactly the same. Therefore, we can simplify them. So we're going to simplify the two coefficients. Well, negative 23 and positive 6 is going to give you negative 17y squared. The y squared, the, x, the variable and the exponent don't change when you add or subtract. Let's take a look at this next one. Now, there's a little trick here. There's something to remember. There is a coefficient on this second x squared y. It's a 1. So keep that in mind that whenever you see that term like that, remember to go ahead and just pretend, just remember there's a 1 there, leaving this at 37 x squared y. Number 6, same, same process. It's got that negative 1. So this time it's going to be the 11 a squared b squared. Finally down here on number 8, you cannot put these together just like we talked about up here you have to create that common denominator. And in our case, this one's going to be, be 15. So we're going to go ahead and turn these both into 15. To remember how we get common denominator, the easiest way is simply to multiply the two, variables, the two denominators together, the two bottom numbers. So we go back. How did we turn 5 into 15? We multiply by 3. So we're going to do the same thing to the bottom we do to the top. One of the proper does of equality. It's a division. Okay? So... 2 times 3 is 6, and 1 times 5 is going to be negative 5. So our, our two variable terms aren't going to change. They're going to stay cd squared. So 6 minus 5 is going to give you 1 15, because we don't ever add or subtract the, the denominator. Go ahead and try 1 through 4, or well, I guess 1, through, 1, 3, and 7. And in just a second, I'll show you the answers. All right, as you unpause the video, let's take a look at the answers to those questions. We already did two through eight. Again, you can see the answers. Check your work. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Me another day in class. All right, let's take a look at another step up a little harder. All right, I want to focus mainly starting at 11, 12, 13, 15, and 17. So we're going to do those three. The rest I'm going to ask you to do in just a few minutes. So let's start with 11 and 12. If we go back and take a look at these, we have two different terms. But as we look, we have two sets that are exactly the same. 
we've got 3y, we've got the 9z and negative 3z, as well as 4y and 3y. So we can add the two like terms together. We can have 7y and 6z. The same down here as we look at the next one. These two can be added together because they have the exact same variable and exponent. While they all share the same y, the exponent is what separates them. So now we have 17y squared. And on the next one, we're going to have negative 31 plus 9 to give us negative 22y. Now let's take a look at the word problems. Well, the sum tells us it's addition. So it's 16y squared minus, or plus a negative 5y squared to give us 11y squared. Now, these next couple of the subtraction ones, got to remember something. There were these special phrases in subtraction called the turnaround phrases. Okay? One was less than. That was the most common one we looked at before. But there was a less common one that might show up as subtracted from. Okay? So if we take a look at number seven, we have subtract 9a from 15a. So it's a turnaround phrase. It's negative 15a minus 9a. To work through that answer, that means we have two negatives. So we're going to add that negative. So we're going to get negative 24a. Be sure you keep your eye out for these turnaround phrases. Pause the video. Go ahead and work uh, 10 through 18, even. All right, as you unpause the video, let's go ahead and take a look at all the answers. Okay. Check your work. If you have any questions, let's talk about it another day in class. All right, let's take a look at now multiplying monomials. So multiplying monomials is different. Okay? Add or subtract, you had to have the exact same everything to do to work with them. With a multiplying monomials, you don't have to be exactly the same every single time. You just have to pay attention to the variable, and then that has to be you can combine the variables together. So the first step I want you to think of is multiply the coefficients. So any numerical coefficient on the variable term, you're just going to multiply those together because those are a like term. And the product rule is how you work out to simplify the exponents. Well, here's the product rule in algebraic terms. A, plus, a times a, a m plus or times a n, you're going to go ahead and just look and you're going to add those two together. You're going to say, okay, the two variables get added together if these two are exactly the same. So A is considered your base. Okay? This never changes. Okay? Never changes. And that's key to remember. So if we take a look now on the two, we don't have to simplify two to the fourth or two to the sixth to add together. We can go ahead, okay, the two is the base. Four plus six, if you take a look at the next line, is ten. It kind of connects back to the order of operations in a way. Because multiplication is repeated addition. So to solve any multiplying monomials, you're going to add the two exponents. I wonder if that holds true between division and subtraction, and exponents and multiplication. Because they're the other repeated processes. Let's explore that as we continue to look at our rules for exponents. So let's take a look at these next few. We'll just do a few on this page. We won't do them all, and I'll let you check them. So this first one, we have our common base, x and x. So I can combine my variables. Well, x to the second plus 3 is going to give me an answer, x to the fifth. Okay. Now, again, like on the previous problem, what if there's a coefficient? looks like we have a question. It looks like it's a to the ninth, but we have a with no, no exponent. Well, is there, no, there is actually an exponent here. If there is an a, there is how many a's? One. So your exponent on any just common individual letter or variable is always going to be 1. So keep that in mind. This is a key concept because then it becomes a 9 plus 1 to give you a to the 10th power. Now let's take a look at a couple that have a coefficient. So our first step was just to multiply those two coefficients. So as you can see, the answer right here is going to be 12. And then you're going to add 2 plus 5 to get 12x to the 7th power. As you keep going down the list, there's just different ways to look at these. Number 9, let's take a look and explore this one. Where our coefficient is negative 2, 3, and 1. 
So 2 times, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, times 3 is negative 6. x, x, and then 2 x's here is going to give me x to the fourth. y to the first, y to the first plus y to the third gives you y to the fifth. Okay? Pause the video for a few moments and try the remaining five problems. All right, as you unpause the video, check your answers. I know you did a great job. Let's move on just a little, one step harder. So you can see there's just different structures of writing them. Let's take a look at our fractions. So fractions work the same way. It still follows the same rules. You're going to multiply your two coefficients. Don't forget those handy rules with, with fractions that any whole number has a 1. And you can cross-reduce. If any across the 2x, across those lines, have a common term or a common factor, you can factor those out. So 2 and 1 don't have a common factor, but 3 and 12 do. I can divide 3 by 3 and get 1, and 12 by 3 and get 4. Now I'm left with just 4 times 2. So I have 8. Now I just have 1x, and then I have 1y and 4y here, so I have y to the fifth. Okay? Now, down here on 16 through 19, you have both steps we've been working on. You have both a multiplying monomials and an addition of monomials. So, like the order of operations says, you do your multiplication step first on both pieces because you cannot add unless you have that exact same variables and exponents. So, let's check this to see if that works. So, 2 and 4 is 8. x to the fifth plus x to the first is x to the sixth y to the second and y to the third is y to the fifth. Okay, we're going to pause our plus sign. Well, only one coefficient, so that's going to be three. x to the fourth plus x to the second is x to the sixth. And y to the fourth and y to the first is y to the fifth. That gave you your common terms, letting you equal 11, x to the sixth, y to the fifth. Okay, pause the video and go ahead and try 17 through 19. Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answers. All right, check your work. Pause the video if needed. Great. Now that you've got this idea, I want you to go ahead and get a head start on your homework.